Hi, hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome to Wonder Wednesday. Uh, I know usually these show up uh, on Facebook at 10 a.m. live, but I am having some issues with Facebook and I actually cannot uh, get into my Facebook account. So luckily I can um, record this information. Um, I'm actually recording on Zoom and I will ask my wonderful assistant, uh, Debbie, to post this for you because it's Wonder Wednesday and I love doing these uh, conversations. I love having these conversations with you. I just wish that I was on Facebook so I could see your comments and respond accordingly. So hi everyone, I'm Denise Siegel. I am the CEO and curator of Living Healthy List dot com for those of you who don't know me um, many of you know me as the happy living coach because i am all about health and happiness and that's what we talk about here at living healthy list and so on wonder wednesday always want to bring to mind questions that we're wondering about you know things that you know we may not ask the questions about or we just maybe we want to know the answer or maybe we don't really want to know the answer because it's a touchy subject but always something that we are um, that's in the back of our mind or something that we really need to know. So this month we have been talking about breast cancer and breast cancer awareness. Uh, we've talked about um, obviously awareness, but also preparedness, being prepared for that conversation that um, you may have with a doctor or your mother or your sister or your best friend may have with a doctor and they say you have breast cancer. Being prepared is essential when it comes to those questions or to those conversations because when you're prepared, you are less emotional and much more pragmatic about what you need to do and how to move forward. Um, we talked about how having a positive attitude is really important when and if, if and when, because um, we know that, you know, at some point in life, we're all are going to know somebody, probably a lot of somebody's who have get or who get diagnosed with breast cancer. So we want to make sure that, you know, having a positive attitude, helping those people, those women to continue to have a positive attitude, even with a, you know, a devastating um, diagnosis, um, no matter what, it's going to be devastating. Even if it's, you know, oh, it's only stage one, it'll be fine. It's devastating. I mean, because it's our health. And for those of us who focus on healthy living and a healthy lifestyle, sometimes, you know, no matter how healthy your lifestyle, sometimes we're just dealt a bad card, a bad health card, and things happen. So having that positive attitude is so important um, during, the, um, during the entire process, um, especially when talking to doctors and social workers and insurance and, and really just living your life. Because in all, all of our lives, there are, there's always going to be something that we are dealing with that we need to manage, that we need to handle. And so the more positively we can, um, we can do that, the better the outcome usually is. Um, we've also um, talked about um, learning from experience. Uh, my friend, Nicole, we talked to her a couple of weeks ago. This is her book, How Cancer Cured My Broken Soul, uh, a terrifying, raw, and side-splitting tale of one woman's breast cancer journey. And what we learned from Nicole uh, and, and truly in the book, um, Nicole was uh, in her early 40s. She was only 42 when she was diagnosed with late stage breast cancer. Um, and she under, underwent a double mastectomy and reconstruction. And obviously devastating, devastating, scary, um, mortifying news. But through Nicole's experience, we learned that it's possible to get through. And again, um, a little bit of humor goes a long way. Uh, and I really do encourage you, um, read the book, um, whether it's something that, you know, you need for yourself or for somebody else, you never know where the information that you, uh, that you'll get from the book will, um, be, um, be needed. Um, again, it could be something that you may need at some point. It could be something that you could share with, you know, your sister or your daughter or your mom, um, I think it's really important to have resources at hand and resources that make sense. Sometimes things that the doctors send you send you home with are overwhelming. They're vague and you know they could they're a little bit too medical. This is something that is really um, 
easy to understand. She gives you some uh, resources in here and some ideas and thoughts to um, really to help you manage uh, through that. So that again is learning from somebody else's experience when it comes to breast cancer, breast cancer awareness and preparedness. Um, I touched on a second ago, you know, healthy lifestyle, you know, for those of us who are seeking that healthy lifestyle. Um, and it, I say seeking because we're always, every day is a little different. Um, you know, some days you kind of feel like, you know what, I just want to have pizza. Um, not that pizza is bad. It's my favorite food in the world, <laughs> but um, healthy, you know, living a healthy lifestyle, making sure that we're eating good food and that we're sleeping and we're getting our exercise, we're getting outside and we're relieving our stress. We could be doing all of the right things. And like I said, sometimes, you know, we're still handed a bad uh, health card. Um, and so, you know, when it comes to health, obviously one of the things, especially when it comes to breast cancer, it's healthy weight, your healthy body weight. Um, people who are overweight and obese have a higher um, incidence or higher risk of certain cancers, breast cancer being one of them. So we want to make sure that we are doing everything that we can um, to prevent some of these cancers. Again, sometimes it just happens. It's just what's in our body. It's in our DNA or genes, give it a name. Um, but there are other things that we can do. Um, and as kind of the curator of Living Healthy List, and my sister and I've had a conversation about the word curator. What does that actually mean? A lot of people think, oh yes, you know, you go to the museum, there's a curator. Well, it's actually more than that. At Living Healthy List, I'm the curator of honest, reliable, and unbiased information that I provide my, uh, with, by myself um, of, from the research that I've done or research and, and, and work that my experts on Living Healthy List, my experts, the experts on livinghealthylist.com provide. Because, you know, I have a great experience in health, in health and, and wellness. I am a, both a life coach and a health coach. I have, you know, certifications in nutrition and in food. Um, and that's a piece of it. And that's where my experts come in because they fill in where my knowledge uh, ends, um, they fill in. And so we really do have this broad information on health, wellness, personal development, and bringing a little bit of fun back into life. Um, some of our people, uh, who are experts who do that, Sandy Haddock, absolutely, because she is our travel expert. Uh, Luann Beekler, who is one, our passion test uh, facilitator, uh, but she also takes women out uh, to the Boundary Waters in um, Minnesota. And she's amazing. She does it a couple times a, uh, a couple times a year, and um, for a lot of people, that's fun. For me, that scares me to death. Uh, I haven't done it yet, but I will definitely. It's definitely on the uh, the list of things to uh, to do at some point. Um, so anyway, so my job as curator, getting back to curator, really, my job is to bring you the best information, um, information that's new, that's unbiased. Uh, and researched. Uh, I do have, I'm really lucky. We're really lucky at Living Healthy List. Uh, my husband's a doctor, so I have our, our own medical director. Um, so anytime there's something that I don't understand, uh, I can ask him and we go through the material together and he can explain it to me in, uh, in layman's terms, I guess. Um, and so something that I came across recently. I'm really excited about this. You know, sometimes I come across things because people send me information. Hey, did you know about this? Or, hey, you should read this book. Well, I came across um, some information recently, kind of by accident. Um, I'm not even sure how I found it, um, but I found it was a PSA, public service announcement, about a company that had started um, and they were giving not giving, they were pr uh, providing um, healthy meals, uh, plant-based meals. And so I thought, well, there's, you know, there's a couple of those different companies like Blue Apron and uh, Marley Spoon, HelloFresh, and they're all great. You can pick all sorts of different cuisines, you know, whether you're vegetarian or vegan or paleo, you can do all of that. And what you do there is you, they send you the food and then you make it and uh, you have dinner. What this company does is a little different. They actually make the foods. These are all either vegan or pescatarian because this particular um, thought process that I'll tell you about in a second um, does uh, allow for um, fatty fish uh, in the diet. 
Um, but what I thought was really interesting and how this ties into breast cancer was this is called the, this is the book, it's called The Longevity Diet by Dr. Uh, Walter Longo, who is a PhD and has been studying um, aging uh, and the effects of aging uh, for the last 25 years. And what I found really intriguing, of course, the, the book is called The Longevity Diet, um, but it's not exactly a diet like you think. Um, um, it's not one of those go on a diet for a short period of time and then go back to eating normally. What this, this um, Dr. Uh, Longo has studied are the people in the areas, we know them as blue zones, who live the longest. They have the, most, uh, the highest uh, percentage of older people, highest percentage of centenarians, which of course are people who live 100 years uh, plus. And basically, um, Dan Buettner has written about the Blue Zones and talked about that. He, you know, he's really kind of made them famous. But Dr. Longo is the person who's been kind of doing the studies behind that. Um, he does clinical studies. He's done mouse model studies and um, all around the world. So he's actually in uh, California. I think he's at USC in California. But he also partners with um, hospitals and programs in uh, Italy, in Rome and I wanna say in Milan, I could be wrong. But what's really intriguing is the fact that he's been doing this for so long and really kind of chunking down on what is going on in our bodies. Like it's, it's, not, just, uh, it, it's not just clinical, it's oh, well, this one feels like this. It really is looking at what is happening in the cells. So clinical research is when you see, you know, people will tell you this is how they feel, this is what's going on. He goes beyond that and actually does the um, experiments to find out what is going on in your body at a cellular level. And why I'm bringing this up is in chapter uh, six on page 114, nope, 117, which I had for, uh, open for a second. And what this talks about on page 117 when I get there is how nutrition and fasting mimicking diets, um, it's, it's called nutrition and fast mimicking diets in cancer prevention and treatment. Now, of course, um, when it comes to anything medical, this, this is just information that I'm giving you. you know, I'm not a doctor, so um, this is just information for education purposes. But what is intriguing about this is he talks about when it comes to cancer, and of course, we're talking breast cancer um, here today. But when it comes to cancer, he talks about starving the cancer cells. And that's where this fast mimicking diet comes in. And I know people are like, ooh, fasting, I don't want to do that. Um, and I've done it a couple of times. It's not fun. But what they've done is they've come up with a, a way to give you nutrition. And that's why it's called fast mimicking diet. Um, and it's something you just do periodically. Um, obviously, if you're going through breast cancer, it's something that you want to talk to your doctor about. You know, that's why I recommend getting the book, The Longevity Diet by uh, Dr. Walter Longo. Um, and, you know, I would really recommend getting the book and reading it. It's really intriguing um, how they see that when, um, well, they've done my studies and obviously now they've done some, some studies in humans or with people. Um, they're still working on those studies. So the, the, the information is inconclusive right now, but the research does point to in this particular direction that fast fasting before and after chemotherapy helped people, uh, one, it, it lowered the amount of um, symptoms that people were dealing with during chemo. And I remember my dad went through chemo, um, gosh, 16 years ago. Oh, sorry, I got a little choked up there. And it wasn't fun. You know, it's, you know, he, you know, the day, the day of he was fine, you know, but he was tired, he was lethargic, he didn't feel good, it was nausea, uh, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and had he, had we known that there was a way to um, kind of curb some of those symptoms, man, I'm sure we would have talked him into doing it. Um, so what I think is really important, again, as a curator, I want to make sure that we're giving you information that you might not see any place else. Um, the exciting thing about the longevity diet, this book, um, is the people at Nutrition for Longevity have taken Dr. Longo's research when it comes to food and diet and, and the blue zones and what are people in those areas eating. It's almost all, all plant-based, whole grains, beans, legumes, nuts, seeds, 
uh, fruits and vegetables um, and some fish. Um, really not any uh, animal proteins uh, for the most part. I mean, some, you know, the Mediterranean diet has a little bit, you know, so there are places that have a little bit of um, animal protein, but mostly um, the people in the blue zones and the people that uh, have been studied, uh, Dr. Longo's been studying through the years, um, are people who are mostly uh, plant-based. So what I think is exciting is this company, Nutrition for Longevity, has taken the information from Dr. Longo's book and made eating healthy, eating a vegetarian diet with some fish really simple. Uh, and there'll be more about that. I actually was excited. I did a, I had an interview recently uh, with Jennifer Maynard, who is the CEO of Nutrition for Longevity. And you'll be able to see that in our new um, edition of Living Healthy List on November 1st. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but I did want to really just mention that this is really interesting information. Um, and I think, again, when we talk about breast cancer, obviously awareness is one thing, but being prepared is another. And any piece of information that you can bring into your life, into your library, is essential for dealing with it, dealing with the stress, managing it, and uh, being able to um, recover and move forward with life. So I want to thank you for joining me today. I'm sorry, I'm not live today. Um, I'm working on that. Um, hopefully, by the, uh, hopefully in the next two weeks after the election, Facebook will be able to figure out what's going on with my account and I'll be able to join you here live. Uh, but I do, one thing I'd love for you to do for me today, um, if there's uh, one thing that I always ask, um, this is my, my, my ask every week, if you haven't already done so, please go on to livinghealthylist.com, sign up for our let, uh, newsletter and join our community. We are a community of health and wellness uh, experts who really are here to help you, provide you with the information you're looking for all in one place. So thanks again. Have a great week, everyone. I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.